Hello and welcome to the sixth video in my Evolver Programming Guide series. In this video we're going to go over some of the new features we saw in the last programming video as well as the new song mode. As you remember in the last video we covered the chord pad and the lane variations. This time we're going to look at song mode. Now for those who wanted to follow along, that was the On Patrol performance. Um, that will do for this demonstration. What won't do is those chords. We need to generate a new set of chords with a little bit more variety. To do that we press the hamburger menu and select a key and scale. In this case D minor. Now in the last programming guide we discussed how to transpose these chords and create variations but I'm going to go with the defaults for now. The song chain as you can see here can be up to 255 in length, it's just a scrollable interface and we just click the add button to add a chord. When a chord's added you can see that the lanes that are um, A, B, C, D are um, active and you can see the variation numbers underneath those chords. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a few chords. And when you're happy with your selection, press play to preview. Now although that sounds fine and it was great for a demonstration, I'm going to delete this and start again and this time introduce the instruments or the lanes uh, one at a time. I'm going to start by previewing lanes B and C, which I believe are the drums and bass, yes. So let's add a sequence, the same sequence of chords again, but just using the drum and bass. And if you watch when I'm adding this, you'll see that only lanes B and C are active in each of the cells, and variation 1 is displayed underneath. Now if you're watching closely, you'll notice that I did that by uh, disabling and enabling lanes within the lane variation screen. So what I'm doing now is I've enabled lane D and I'm adding a similar set of chords for lane D. I'm going to re-enable lane A and then add some more chords. And if you look at those cells in the, uh, in the chord chain, you'll see the uh, A, B, C, D now are, are all active. All playing variation one though. So let's give that a go, see what it sounds like. And I just enabled loop mode there so that uh, when it gets to the end of the sequence it starts the sequence again. So you can use this for creating a sequence of chords to practice too. Now this is all well and good but we haven't touched on variations yet. So what I'm going to do is go back to those first four chords and just take a listen to the drums. So as you can hear they're pretty hectic so what I'm going to do is just create a pulsing bass drum and assign that to variation 2 on lane B which is the drums. Now one thing I don't think I covered in the last video, if you press and hold on a variation number you can actually copy a variation from another variation. So in this case I copied variation 1 into slot 2. So now let's modify those drums. I'm going to go to the notes tab and I'm going to change the sequence length to 8 because all I want is a couple of uh, bass drums on, on 8. So I'm going to remove everything but notes 1 and 5 here. You do this by selecting each note in the sequence and then pressing the no note button to remo remove the note. Okay so now let's just see what it sounds like. Okay, so let's play, replace note 5, which is a snare, with a bass drum. And I'm using a record button to do that. So now we have a just a bass drum sequence on variation 2. We can go and add that to the song chain. And the way we do that is we don't want to add anything to the song chain. We we'll want to replace items that are already there. So the goal now is to set variation 2 on those first four items in the chain. 
let's just check yeah lane b is the drum so if we select item one in the song chain select variation two hit the replace button and pick the chord we want in there and it will set that variation and the uh, mute status for each of the lanes back up again so if we do that for each of the first four items we should be set now notice that when you select an item in the song chain or chord chain the variations lane reflects that selection So you can now see how to construct a song using chords and variations and enabling and disabling the lanes uh, as part of the song. Okay, let's take a look at another example and go over a few things that you're going to need to know in order to construct your song. So supposing we want to add a pause within the song, how do we do that? And how do we change the length of each element? Well, let's go over that now. So I want to insert a pause after the first four items in this song chain. Now we can insert something into the song chain, but there's no direct way to insert a pause. So at that position, I'm going to insert a chord and then hit the clear button, which creates a empty cell. We could do the same by hitting the empty button, but it appends to the end. So it's kind of a two-step thing if you want to insert one in the middle. Now, by selecting one of these cells, we can then use the uh, length up and down buttons to adjust the length between 1 and 64 beats. Now, if we rewind and play, we can hear that. So basically you can use these empty slots or pauses to control uh, where uh, Evolver comes in with various elements or variations at different parts of your song. And obviously that sat in a DAW would play along with the host tempo. Now the other thing I want to touch on here is the fact you can actually drag a selection and you have cut, copy and paste tools here. So if we uh, copy a selection, place the cursor paste we can actually copy and paste parts of the song around very easily now before we complete this video i want to take a look at uh, evolver and song construction working within a daw in this case cubasis so let's take a look at this project here you can see i have two instances of evolver running inside uh, cubasis if we take a look at this first instance you'll notice that the uh, host sync button on the left is disabled which means that we can press the play and we can hear the, um, the pattern playing. Now, if we turn host sync on, it will disable the ability to play within Evolver itself. But if you're running inside a host and you want everything to sync up, enable host sync and then you can use the host transport as follows. Okay, I think there's a problem with the video recording here as the cursor's stuck. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the second instance. And if you look at the second in instance, you'll see that it has a pause at the beginning. Now, when the first one ends, the second one's kicking in. So you see you can chain them together. Now, ordinarily, you'd stick everything in a single instance. But this was just to demonstrate a delay before a uh, performance kicking in. Now before I go, if there's any Evolve users out there that have created some fantastic performances they want to share with the world, please send them to this email address and we'll consider including them in a forthcoming Evolver release. 
I know there's lots of creative users out there that I'd love to get involved. Okay, that just about wraps up this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.